and boom. There you have it. That is how you add a super sexy moon to your already stunning photographs. What's up YouTube, it's your boy. B Mac. So of all the different things I do to my photos to make them look sexy, one of my favorite things to include in any photo is a shot of the moon. I'm a huge fan of the moon. I sometimes find myself howling at it. I don't know, it's a thing. Some of my best Instagram photos of all time actually happen to have a moon in the shot. At bmacadelic on Instagram or instagram.com slash bmacadelic if you wanna follow along, see the shots I'm talking about. Maybe shoot me a follow if you like what you see. But if you've ever tried actually photographing the moon in your shot, usually it doesn't always come out the way you want it to. So usually what I end up doing is actually just replacing the moon altogether or adding the moon when it wasn't there to begin with. And that is exactly what I'm gonna teach you how to do today. We're gonna add some sexy moons to our photos. And to do this, we're gonna fire up Adobe Photoshop, which you can download and try for free with the Adobe Photoshop free trial. So if you wanna follow along, try out Photoshop before you buy it. There you go. So once you got your photo you wanna add your moon to, and once you got Adobe Photoshop fired up on your computer, let's take a trip to the moon lagoon. You get it? Cause we're adding moons to our photos. Mo that's, let's just hop into Photoshop. All right, so here we are in Adobe Photoshop. These are three different photos I actually posted to my Instagram feed. We have this shot right here, which was taken in Salem, Massachusetts. The second shot we'll take a look at, this was taken in New York City with the Empire State Building right here. And this third shot is from October, the very Halloween-esque image right here. All three of these photos have a Photoshopped moon edited into the photo, so let's get started. Now, the first thing you wanna do is just open your photo that you wanna add the moon to. This photo's all set, it's fully edited. I actually have a full tutorial on my channel for editing your photos to make them look more professional. So an annotation will pop up in the top right hand corner of your screen. Or of course, a link will always be in the video description box below this video as well. If you want to start post processing and editing your photos like a pro to get them to look more like this. So be sure to check that out if that's something you're into. But once you have your main photo opened within Photoshop, the next thing you want to do is add the moon. And to do that, you're going to want to find a photograph of the moon that's either a PNG file or just get a shot of the moon with a black background. Just make sure the background's black. You could use your own photograph if you have one or you could find one online through some of the royalty free image sites that are available to you but just get a shot of the moon that you think looks good once you have that you're just going to drag and drop it into your project and there you go so hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial thanks for watching <laughs> imagine i left it like that the next thing you're going to want to do is just go to one of the corners of the moon you're going to hold down shift then drag the moon and size it down to about the size you want. Now the reason why you hold down shift while doing this is because if you don't, you're gonna mess up the aspect ratio and the proportion sizes of the moon itself. It's gonna look really distorted. So by holding down shift, you'll make sure you preserve the aspect ratio and the proportions to make sure it looks real. You size it down to about the size you want and then you just click and drag it to around the general area where you want it. And then you can make a couple more adjustments like rotating it, whatever suits your taste. Right around there looks good for me. And you could click enter to place it there. And if you have a PNG file of the moon, you should be all set. You won't have this black background, but if you do have this black background, the next thing you wanna do is go over here to your layer section. This shows all your layers within your project right here. Make sure you have your moon layer selected and you go right up here where it says normal. These are your blending options for this layer. You're gonna scroll down to screen, select screen and boom. You just created a miracle. You can click off this layer again to see the overall photograph without any borders around the moon. And as you can see, that looks pretty good. Now you can stop right here if you wanted to. That looks like a pretty good moon. But we're gonna make a couple more adjustments, a couple more tweaks to really blend this moon in with the rest of the photo to make it more realistic. The very first thing I'll do is go over here, select the moon layer, and then I'll start to adjust the opacity. Now generally this is anywhere from like 60 to 90%. For this one, I'm just gonna drag it down until it blends just a little bit better with the rest of the image. That's a little bit too much. Usually it's right around like 75. That looks perfect. I'll click off of that layer just to see the whole photograph as it is. And as you can see, that makes a pretty big difference in blending already. If we undo that, you can see the difference. That's with the opacity at 100%. That's with the opacity at 75. Makes a pretty big difference in blending already right there. So once the opacity is set and once that looks good for your moon in your photo, you're gonna to wanna to go back over here, select your moon layer again, scroll down to the new adjustment layer, which is this button right here. You're gonna to wanna to select that. And the very first thing we're gonna do is adjust the curves a little bit. So you just scroll up to curves, click that. Now this will bring up a tone curve. Before you do anything else, click this button right here. That creates a clipping mask, which means any adjustments you make to this tone curve with this adjustment layer right here is only going to adjust the layer directly beneath 
beneath it, which in this case is our moon. If you don't do that, any adjustments you make to this tone curve is going to affect the moon and the rest of the photo. That's not something we want. We just want to adjust the moon itself. Make sure you have that button selected. You could confirm you have it selected right there or over here. Make sure that clipping mask is on. Now, if you don't know how a tone curve works, these are basically the dark parts of our image, the shadows, the mid-tones right here, and then the highlights up here. I'll generally just make a couple points on this tone curve just like that, just to have a couple adjustments to work with. One thing you don't want to do is don't drag this part of the tone curve up because once you do that, you're going to start to be lifting the blacks, which will bring back some of that border that we got rid of. So don't do that. If anything, what I'll usually do is I'll actually crush the blacks by dragging them to the right like this. But the more you do that, it starts to eat away at the moon. So I usually won't adjust that section of the tone curve too much. Maybe right here, this first point on the curve, maybe just slightly. Most of my adjustments are to the mid-tones and highlights of the moon, because that's where most of the detail is anyway. And I'll usually just dip those just a little bit. And you can see, this might be kind of hard to see on YouTube because of the compression. But by adjusting this a little bit and just bringing down the points on the tone curve around the mid-tones and highlight section, you bring back a little bit of character with the craters in the moon. So it's not as bright and white as it was before. If we close out of our properties box and we take a look at that, just by toggling this on and off, you can see this very white and bright section of the moon with our curves adjustment is lessened just a little bit. And in my opinion, that goes a long way in making the moon just look a little bit more realistic. Now this looks pretty good already, but I do want to add a little bit of color to the moon just to balance it a little bit more with the sunset tones we have going on down here. So to do that, we're going to go back over here, make sure our moon layer is selected, create a new adjustment layer, click that, and we're going to go up to hue and saturation. Make sure once again your clipping mask is set to on for that layer. Now quick little tip, you could just click colorize which will make Adobe Photoshop adjust the hue and saturation of this layer to match the rest of the photo. Now sometimes this does a pretty good job and you can leave it just like that but most of the time I like to make the adjustment myself. So I'll unselect colorize, I'll boost the saturation up to <laughs> plus 100 which you normally should never do but I'm doing that so I could actually see the colors that I'm bringing out in the moon. And then I'll actually adjust the hue slider and drag that left and right until I get a color I want. And again, I'm trying to match this slightly with the sunset tones we have going on down here. So that's not too bad. Right around there looks pretty good. And obviously that looks pretty bad. That looks like a very photoshopped moon right there with that jagged edges we have going on. Doesn't look good. That's because the saturation at plus 100. So I'll bring this back down to zero then slightly bring it up. Drag the saturation slider to the right the plus range. I would highly suggest never going to a plus 100, but I'm going to bring it up just to where I start to see a little bit of tone coming out in that moon. That looks pretty good. Now it's an ever so slight adjustment. If we toggle that on and off, you probably won't even see a difference on YouTube, but I promise you when you're doing this yourself within Photoshop with these two adjustments, it's the subtle things that go a long way. And that's pretty much it. You just adjust the opacity, add a curves adjustment layer and a hue saturation adjustment layer. And between those three things, you'll have a pretty well blended good looking moon that looks realistic within your photo. Now you can stop here. That's pretty much all you need to know, but a little bit of an advanced technique. If you really want to sell the idea of the moon being in your photo and not making it look photoshopped, we'll take a look at this New York City moon shot I have right here. Now this is a little bit more advanced because we actually have the moon peeking out from behind the clouds right here. Now how I was able to accomplish that was by using a mask. I added a layer mask to the moon right here because if I actually select the layer mask and shift and click on it, that'll show the original right there. You can see these edges right here of the moon, just a little bit too harsh. Not a big deal, but that harsh edge, especially right here, kind of suggests that this moon was photoshopped and it's not really as well blended as it could be. So if we shift click again on that layer mask, you'd see the difference right there. That little bit of blending makes a big difference. Now I'm not gonna get too into detail about layer masks. That's an entire video in and of itself. But if you're somewhat familiar with layer masks, just know that you can utilize them to blend the moon into your photo even more so. That's the same technique I used to blend this moon for this October sky photo to make these clouds that appear in the horizon right here to make them appear in front of the moon. Because again, without that, it just looks a little bit too Photoshop for my taste. By using the layer mask, that's like the cherry on top of blending the moon into your photo to make it look that much more realistic and that much more professional. And boom. There you have it. That is how you add a super sexy moon to your already stunning photographs. Just by using this Adobe Photoshop moon technique, you instantly could get a couple hundred more likes on your photos. I mean, who doesn't like a shot of the moon? Let's be honest. I love doing this from time to time when there's like a certain little bit of spice missing from my photo. I need that last little 
Inf, you know what I mean? Mm. And I think you'll find this technique helpful. And as always, don't forget to tag me in the comments of your moon photographs or just use the hashtag, hashtag BMacadelic. That way you can check out your moon shots and leave a like on a few of my favorites. Don't forget to subscribe for more photography tutorials like this one on this channel each and every week. Smash that thumbs up button if you ended up liking this video. And don't forget to comment down below your thoughts on photoshopping the moon into your photos. As always, I'll be hearting and replying to some of my favorites. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. And a quick thank you to all the werewolves out there who sponsored this video. Werewolves, I got you, and uh, you're welcome. <laughs>